In the 16th century, Italian diplomat Niccolo Machiavelli crafted a blueprint for achieving political power. The prince illustrated one of the guiding principles in the art of politics, that a prince will be despised if he's considered changeable, foolish, or weak. Machiavelli says a prince should always show courage, seriousness, and most of all, strength, because without it, Machiavelli believed that it would divide your base into factions, and your weaker factions would be preyed upon by your political enemy and turned against you. Now, whether they want to admit it or not, every American politician has read Machiavelli, and they go to great lengths to hide weakness. Fearing it, if they show weakness, voters will show them the door. FDR, America's longest-serving president, was wheelchair-bound for long stretches. The American public clueless to his handicap. FDR devised a way to walk using leg braces and the arms of his most trusted advisors. Woodrow Wilson had a stroke that partially paralyzed him, but his wife, Edith, served as shadow president until the end of his term. Although JFK went out of his way to display his youthful athleticism, behind the scenes he struggled with excruciating back pain, so debilitating he was forced to wear a back brace and undergo invasive spinal surgeries. But you'd never know. Not only did Reagan survive an assassination attempt, the bullet reaching within a half an inch of his heart, there were concerns late in his second term about Alzheimer's. But the Reagans handled it gracefully. You're not getting too old to run again, are you, sir? How would you like a piece of cake, Sam? <laughs> Biden's been in Washington for 40 years. He knows when there's blood in the water. He knows that any weakness will be seized upon by the press and his political enemies and even members of his own party. Biden's the oldest president in American history. He suffered two brain aneurysms. And let's be honest, he was a serial plagiarist who was really never known for his intellect. Biden's brain was an issue back in 2020. Please clarify specifically, have you taken a cognitive no, test? No, I haven't taken a test. Why the hell would I take a test? Come on, man. That's like saying you, before you got in this program, you take a test where you're taking cocaine or not. What do you think, huh? Are, are you a junkie? What do you I mean, I don't even understand the point he was trying to make. Perhaps the point, it's an insulting question to ask. But this isn't about bad manners. The president's own administration confirmed he's a doddering old man with diminished faculties who struggles to speak and couldn't remember when he was vice president. Now, the White House denies this, but it was captured on tape. So why wouldn't the White House order the tape released to prove to the country that the president is still with it? Are you eager for this material to be made public? Do you support their release? Well, look, and I just want to be really clear, it's not just us. There was also a bipartisan voices and illegal, illegal experts who have said it was wrong, flatly wrong, right? It was, it was gratuitous. It was inappropriate. So you won't say, canceled. given that you think the report is flatly wrong and gratuitous, yeah. you can't say if you want the material to be made public? If the American people well, No, what I can this? say, it's being, they're discussing it, they're looking at it. The administration has a five-hour tape of Biden not remembering when his son died and when he became Barack's VP and where he exhibits significant limitations. These limitations were so significant, Biden wasn't charged because a jury would take pity on him. That was the excuse. These tapes are blackmail tapes. If they're released, Biden's re-election campaign's finished. So they're being leveraged over the president and can be used against him at any time. Not only is he compromised by the Chinese, he's now subject to blackmail by his own administration. So if the public can't see the tapes, will Joe Biden take a cognitive test? Does the White House think that the, the idea of the president taking a cognition test, a cognitive test, as a part of this uh, physical is a legitimate idea, particularly just on the heels of the special counsel report, more polling. I'm just gonna say what the what uh, Dr. O'Connor, it's kind of a, uh, what he said to me about a year ago, uh, when the report came out last year, uh, obviously on his physical, uh, which is the president proves every day how he operates, how he thinks, right? But by dealing with world leaders, by making really difficult decisions on behalf of the, the American people, whether it's domestic, whether it's national security. And so he shows it every day on how he thinks, how he operates. I mean, Biden makes bad decisions. 86% of the country believes that the oldest president ever 
isn't mentally fit enough to serve another term, and he's refusing to take a cognitive test. And the White House doctor is refusing to administer one. And the First Lady refuses to acknowledge anything's wrong. One reason to explain this state of affairs, the Goldwater Rule. Barry Goldwater, the Republican nominee for president in 1964, was a workaholic, a Cold War hawk, who at one point suggested lobbing a nuke into the men's room at the Kremlin. Later, a group of random psychiatrists sprinkled throughout the country diagnosed Barry Goldwater as unfit to be president. And after that incident, the Goldwater Rule prohibited psychiatrists from diagnosing someone without personally examining them. Now, primetime agrees with the Goldwater Rule. Doctors shouldn't be diagnosing people by just watching them on TV. If they could, I'd be fitted for a straitjacket. Now, the media knows the Goldwater Rule. The New York Times writes, memory loss requires careful diagnosis, scientists say. But it didn't stop them from diagnosing Trump. The media broke the Goldwater Rule with glee. Remember the headlines? 350 health professionals signed letters to Congress claiming Trump's mental health is deteriorating dangerously. Doctors want President Trump's head examined. Psychiatrists warn Trump's becoming more mentally unstable, putting us world at extreme risk. Trump is mentally unfit. No exam needed. But Trump was game and took a test. The first questions are very easy. The last questions are much more difficult, uh, like a memory question. It's uh, like you'll go person, woman, man, camera, TV. So they say, could you repeat that? So I said, yeah. So it's person, woman, man, camera, TV. If you get it in order, you get extra points. They said nobody gets it in order. It's actually not that easy. But for me, it was easy. <laughs> so Trump aced it. What's Biden afraid of? The Biden campaign could easily put out a cognitive test result by releasing special counsel interview tapes, taking tests, doing Super Bowl interviews, making them available for more press conferences. Instead, they're relying on propaganda from allies to tell you not to believe what you see and hear with your own eyes and ears. If somebody asked me in the middle of the deposition, what year did your mom die? I go, I don't know, 2017, 2018, 2019, I don't know. He's fine. All this right-wing propaganda that his mental acuity has declined is wrong. Age is an objective fact. As I say, it's all relative. He's younger than I am, so what do I have to say about his age? But he is, uh, again, uh, knowledgeable, wise. But the media mob splintering into factions. Some allies, as you just heard, insist Biden's Einstein. Others, as we showed you last night, the New York Times, Carville, Axelrod, Bill Maher, acknowledge Biden's deteriorating and replaceable. And today, The Atlantic, a staunchly progressive publication, called for a new nominee. Quote, Trump is a sociopathic menace who must be defeated in November. However well-suited Biden was to the task of dispatching him four years ago, the situation has changed. Biden cannot possibly be the best person for the job today. The time to fix this mess is now, before it really is too late. Now, after the Her report and Biden's press conference, the media has been given license to legitimately cover Biden's brain. And now every public appearance is being scrutinized through this lens. And the president isn't assuring the nation that he's equipped for four more years. Welcome back to the White House, man. Welcome back. And by the way, Barack's looking at you in the corner over there. And along with Queen Rihanna, who is uh, meeting with Jill now and the Queen... And the Crown Prince Hussein, where is the prince out there? I thought he was coming out. At any rate, Your Majesty, over to you. Mr. Pre Sorry. Mr. President. All right, the president's confused about where to stand and who he's talking to. His base is breaking off into factions, which, as Machiavelli knows, is fatal to political power. RFK Jr. told primetime last night Jill Biden should convince her husband to step down. The media is strategizing about inserting Newsom at the convention. And young voters are not only vulnerable to Trump's appeal, they're straight up enthusiastic about it. We're watching how a prince loses political power.
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.